Okay. I'm just going to share with you some poems from Kumukanda, and some poems not from Kumukanda, but um, I'll be sharing the poems without much by way of introduction. I just let the poems sit in its own space. I may say the titles of the poems, I may not. Kumukanda. Since I haven't danced among my fellow initiates, following a looped procession from woods at the edge of a village, Tatters people would think me unfinished, a child who never sloughed off the childish estate, crossing the river boys of our tribe must cross in order to die and come back grown. I was raised in a strange land by small increments. When I bathed my mother the days she was too weak. When auntie broke the news and I chose a yellow suit and white shoes to dress my mother's body. At the graveside, when a man I almost grew to call dad, though we both needed a hug, shook my hand. If the alternate self that never left could see me, what would he make of these literary pretensions, this need to speak with a tongue that does not belong to me? Would I recognize him, or would he be strange to me as me to him, frowning as he speaks to me in the language of my father and my father's father? and my father's father's father. I have known you by many names, but today you are Larry Levan, your hand on the platter in the smoky room of a garage regular's memory. You're keeping when doves cry in time as you swing your hips and sweat drips from your hair the color of James Brown's scream. King of King Street, we're still moving to the same sound, though some of us don't know it's your grave we dance on. Cutting shapes, machismo lost to the beat. Every roadman is a sweet boy if the DJ plays heartbroken at just the right time for these jaded feet. Teach us to shapeshift, Legba. You must know I'd know your customary shuffle, that phantom limp anywhere that I see your hand in the abandon of a couple, middle of the floor sliding, quick and slick as a skin fade by the hand of a Puerto Rican clipper man who wields a cutthroat like a paintbrush. Let us become like them, an ode to night ordering beer in a corporeal language from a barman who replies by sweeping his arms in an arc, Willy Ninja style. To fix a drink our lips will yearn for, a taste we've been trying to recreate ever since. Artificial light. Clubbers cross themselves in the name of wallet, keys, and phone, and follow the sullen looks of doormen out into the night. Tramps snatch fractious sleep from the South Bank's concrete mattress as oblivious lovers walk their intentions across its duvet of ticket stubs, cigarette butts, and newspapers. After flashed pass or swiped oyster, a seat in the top deck cinema waits, though the main feature is always disturbed. A drunken woman shares her phone call with everyone. Two young men tune her out whispering improvised raps to a handset's tinny beat as a fidget's fingers drum incessant patterns in lieu of a keypad to play the night back. Tonight's picture slowly unfolds on the perspex screen. The brooding lead sulks away, kicks an empty bottle, drags feet that don't want to get where they are going. The love interest watches, cursing the urge to call out. The night bus stops to catch its breath, then trundles on, heaves its weary cargo like a sigh. 
I stand at the edge of the dance floor, watching the rolling motion of your waist as it matches the dips and peaks of the song. I'd stand here all night but for your disarming eyes beckoning as you grip my hand and pull me close enough to hear you. I acknowledge your hey with a casual nod like I as I sway like the song is an afterthought the whole scene a diversion, but your favorite tune drops and you speak to me in your best steps. Will me to take you up in conversation, I yield. And at once there is no tune, no room, just us moving till the lights burst in like errant guests at a house party. As we stand in line to get your coat back, you ask which way I'm walking like always, knowing I'll walk with you as far as the converge of our separate paths, trading words as I deliberate, knowing I won't stop talking and kiss you. Meat wagons sing an ode in sardonic, passing a bus held briefly to regulate the service. Jesus loves you, if you believe in signage. High heels clack, are slung off, taken in hand. A shawl flicked around Our Lady's shoulders flutters. She speeds up by Londis, past friends, pressed against shutters, huddled from the cold round a zoot, toosed then snuffed by a scuffed shoe. This is the hour when a silver glimpse, likely a phone, is a blade, and a patch of shade must be an assailant. A couple on their second date claim a requisite slow dance in the space where restraint cuts its eyes at recklessness. Their arms charm necklaces, warding off the thought of these limbs round some other necks. The night years hence when they'll forget how to want and need in the same breath. And all his words ran out of it, that there was some bright elegance the sad meat of the body made, Amiri Baraka. For the screw-faced in good shoes that paper the walls of dance halls, I have little patience. I say dance, not to be seen but free. Your feet are made for better things. Feel the bitterness in you lift as it did for a six-year-old Bojangle, tapping a living out of Richmond beer gardens to the delight of a crowd that wasn't lynching today but laughing at the quickness of the kid. Throw yourself into the thick, emerging pure, reduced to flesh and bone. Nerve and sinew. Your folded arms understand music. Imagine a packed Savoy ballroom as you slide across the dusty floor as your zoot-suited twenties self. The feather in your hat from an ostrich. The swagger in your step from the ochre dust of a West African village. Dance for the times you've been stalked by store detectives. For a lady on a bus. For the look of disgust on the face of a boy too young to understand why he hates, only that he must. Dance for Sammy, dead and penniless, and for the thousands still scraping a buck as street corner hoofers. Who? though they dance for their food, move as if it is just them and the drums talking.